Come on, Gilly, four years working your guts out. It all comes down to this. Strange decision to wear jeans, admittedly. But we're here now. Come on. Just kidding, obviously. Needed a quirky way to start the episode, so I'm actually fine. Welcome to Footy Plus, powered by the Adelaide Crows. We're down here at the South Australian Athletic Stadium to bring you another episode of all things South Australian sport. What's that? Do I hold any records here? I ran a 10.9 from Mercedes College, but it was wind affected, so it didn't count. But bloody hell, that was quick. Coming up on this episode, Belinda meets some former athletes of the fur variety. They're just, they're so adaptable and they're such lovely dogs. And I prepare to experience sub-zero temperatures in the name of sports science. Fresh, I'm a tough guy. <laughs> Every AFL club experiences highs and lows whilst competing at the elite level. At the Adelaide Football Club, there's been a constant reassuring presence throughout the success, growth, failure and even tragedy. And that's the club's longest serving current player. We talk love, loyalty and leadership with the man they call Dougie, thanks to Harcourts. built a reputation as Adelaide's quiet achiever. Douglas for a career high four goals. He's got it. Some even like to call him underrated. But over 13 years and 234 games, Richard Douglas has never been underestimated by Adelaide. Earlier this year, the club put a fresh one-year contract on the table and the 31-year-old resisted the lure of free agency to sign on and ensure he'll finish his career as a one-club player. It's one thing I'll say and look back at the end of my career and be really proud that I've been able to play at the one club. You learn a lot more about the footy club, the history and the culture and you want to be that person that drives it going forward and um, I've really embraced that and, and tried to become a leader of the football club. Dougie admits he has at times considered returning home to play for a Victorian club. I think early days you have a bit of homesickness naturally as a young fella but um, I never really uh, considered it seriously. I was always really enjoyed the footy club, um, fell in love with the club early days when I got here. He also fell in love with South Australia. It's such a beautiful um, place to live, really relaxing. And most importantly, an Adelaide girl, Alessandra Lee. Obviously meeting an Adelaide girl and now my fiance, it gets harder to leave, so um, you know, I'm really happy and yeah, um, yeah, to call Adelaide home. I just love the, you know, what's outside of Adelaide itself too. And you know, you've got the wine regions, Kangaroo Island, the Flinders Range, and that sort of stuff. I try to really um, explore those those places when I can. Um, and the city, it's really got, you know, really vibey in the last couple of years. It's um, it's changed a lot, and I think now the footy's in the city. It's it's come to life, so it's it's a fantastic place to live. Dougie's embracing his role as a mentor to Adelaide's younger players. I get a lot of enjoyment now out of seeing young guys come through the doors and um, you know, really maturing as people and, and as footballers and, and that gives me a lot of satisfaction. He says he'll keep playing while form, fitness and passion are still with him. But I think um, as soon as it's not, I'll be pretty honest and let the club know and, and uh, moves aside and let someone else take my shoes. They'll be big shoes to fill. And in great news for Crows fans, the veteran is a good chance to make his return to the side for next week's showdown against Port. Douglas injured his ankle during the game against Richmond earlier this month, but is expected to be fit and firing for the club's clash with their crosstown rival. Now, South Australia's Greyhound Adoption Program has been making thousands of dogs happy for more than 20 years. But finding forever homes for retired greyhounds is no easy task. The program's now facing a shortage of foster carers who prepare recently retired greyhounds for life after racing. Belinda Sloan chased down the story. Lua is rolling. Race number three at Angle Park. They're set. As a young sprinter, Socks and Sandals showed plenty of early promise. Socks and Sandals came out running. But he kept falling just short. They run for the money now, though. Socks and Sandals put in a late dive but missed. And it was clear after a handful of starts he wasn't going to make the grade. But, happily, his life was only just beginning. Now he prefers to just go by the name Socks and spends his days sleeping, 
eating and playing in the backyard with his new sister, Bonnie. Sox definitely has a life of leisure after his retirement, and that's all thanks to the South Australian Greyhound Adoption Program. But there are still many former racing greyhounds in our state that require foster carers in order to find their forever home. Foster carers prepare greyhounds for their life after racing as part of the You, Me, Six Weeks initiative. It gives them a, a, a good chance to learn the social graces of a home, so where the bathroom is, where you go to have your dinner, um, what's the children's beds and whether you're allowed on there or not. They need to um, undergo foster, uh, a period in foster care for between three and six weeks so that we can um, help them to be acclimatised and, and ready for rehoming. The problem is many foster carers like James Burkefield, who's now fostering Stan, fall in love with their gentle, affectionate new best friend and end up adopting them. So you've got Piper at home, yep. ex, ex foster dog. Yep. Now that, that was a foster fail. Yeah. Well, a foster fail is, is essentially where you take a foster dog home and you know your intention is to take it and, and teach it how to be a pet and then let someone else um, have them in their lives and, and then you decide that that you just love them too much and you can't you can't let them go. The foster fails are wonderful. We have a few members of staff <laughs> with those now. The more um, that happens though, the effect upon us is that we then still need more foster carers to keep replacing uh, the numbers of people that do fail, foster fail. Primi is the 10th greyhound Ian Eisman has fostered. Fostering the greyhounds has just been tremendous fun. So rewarding for you as well. Yeah, re rewarding, uh, but fun and interesting and not that difficult to do. You be quiet. Um, be because they, they're just they're so adaptable and they're such lovely dogs. If you'd like to help out by fostering or adopting a greyhound, contact Greyhound Adoption SA by phone or email. Our major partner, Toyota, are offering all Crows members a $500 accessory voucher when you buy a new Toyota vehicle. Visit any Toyota dealer with your Crows membership card to claim this fantastic offer. All right, listen up, school kids. It's past your bedtime. Go to bed. But then again, if you're here, you might as well get inspired because I've got an amazing program for you. It's called the South Australian Sports Institute and it's been turning out elite sportsmen and women to compete on the world stage for years. But how do I get chosen for this thing? Well, it starts in the humble high school where naturally gifted kids are identified and encouraged to pursue a sporting dream. I was not one of those kids. Footy Plus checked into the Institute to see how it all works thanks to Thomas Farms. Maeve Plouffe was always a gifted athlete. She just had no idea she wanted to be a cyclist. So I was originally a swimmer and I did a lot of surf lifesaving at my local surf lifesaving club, which is Henley Beach. But after being identified by the South Australian Sports Institute's talent search program, she underwent a range of tests to determine her ideal sport. They did the beep test, vertical jump, sprints. They picked me for sprint kayaking and cycling, track cycling. Um, I originally threw the track cycling piece of paper in the bin, I didn't want to do it. And that would have been the end of it, but for some idle curiosity. Then I decided that I really, really wanted to go out to the Vogue Dome and just like have a try, see how I went, um, and I absolutely loved it. It was so fun, I love going fast on the bike. She went out and um, she made the state team and, and got uh, a silver medal at the national titles and, and that was enough and you know, to convince us that um, you know, she was capable of, of, of much better, much higher you know, um, achievements, which she's, she's done in the, since then. Now 18, Maeve went from two at down under stage assistant to riding in this year's race. She'll be back in the saddle for next year's tour and has set her sights on the 2024 Olympics. She says she couldn't have done it without her coach, Sydney Olympic gold medalist Aiken, who was himself a sassy product. You just need to pace through it a little, That's you know, like, um, so that you've got something in reserve, you know. Yeah. Like I'd never really even ridden a bike properly before. They've taken me from that all the way to racing internationally and that, ju yeah, that just means so much. Sassy's talent search program works with schools to test more than 5,000 students per year, with the focus on year eights and nines. Only a few hundred earn a shot at intensive sports specific testing at the Institute. And then from that point, um, Coaches will then make further selections and offer opportunities for 
um, budding athletes to um, move into their pathway programs. If you look at the history, there's been 17 talent search uh, athletes who have been Olympians. The talent search program's products include international cycling stars Alex Porter, Rowan Dennis, Annette and Alex Edmondson, Olympic bronze medal canoe kayaker Hannah Davis, two-time rowing world champion Chris Morgan and beach volleyballer Bakara Palmer. Every week on Footy Plus, we take a look at something that caught our eye on social media. And this week, Channel 7's AFL Twitter account relived the dance moves of Brodie Smith and Rory Atkins. The video was captured last year by former teammate Charlie Cameron, and I've got to be perfectly honest with you, it's one that the boys would like to bury. I know I think of Rory in a very different light. It's no secret that AFL players aren't shy when it comes to busting a move. Richmond star Josh Caddy strutted his stuff at his former club Geelong. Port Adelaide's Campbell Heath enjoys a boogie in his Ugg boots while doing the dishes. And who could forget the entire St Kilda team shaking their thing during a special rendition of the team song back in 2013. Make sure you keep up to date on all the latest Crows news and behind the scenes action on afc.com.au as well as Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And this week on the Crows show, Hugh Greenwood gives an exclusive look at how the players prepare for interstate games. G'day Crows fans, Hugh Greenwood here standing outside the Virgin Lounge at Adelaide Airport. Uh, the boys know I'm about to get on a, on a flight to Brisbane but for the weekend I'm uh, going to take you through what game preparation looks like on an away trip. You can catch the Crows show on Channel 7 tomorrow at 11.30am with Mark Bickley and Alana Smith. AFL is an incredibly physical game, so getting players to recover quickly is a top priority for high performance staff at every single club. The Adelaide Crows have started relying on some new technology, cryotherapy. That's why we've come down to minus 110 on Hutt Street to find out what it's all about. And Kyle Cheney has been kind enough to demonstrate. Well, if you want to come and meet AFL footballers, this is the spot to be. Probably two or three guys that come in here at least once a week. I know Eddie Betts loves both the chamber and the isolated cryo, so yeah, there's a few boys that love it. What does the effects of it do? The ice bath is there to you know, make the muscles cold. Um, what this does is makes the skin cold, but puts the body into a protective, sort of fights away that cold feeling, I guess. And although I don't know the science completely behind it, but apparently it's beneficial. Of course, I'm here with Dr. Kyle Cheney. <laughs> So I'm here with Marta, who's the owner of Minus 110, and Cheens and I have just got out of there, and we have to say it does feel incredible, but for people who aren't professional athletes, what could they get out of coming to a place like this? So it can focus on recovery, injury management, reduction of swelling and inflammation. What did you say it was like? Having three minutes in there feels like having? So a number of clients describe it like when they walk out, it feels like I had three or four copies at the same time. Just a lot of energy. Fresh. <laughs> Tough guy. You feel invigorated. Yeah, correct. We, we spoke about how much energy we feel like we've got. Oh, if you did it before and after, <laughs> yeah. I feel like we look a lot better right yeah. now. It's great for injuries and it's great for just getting you up and about. If you feel it a bit flat, I'd get down here again. Eddie gets down here. Kyle, you can you come back throughout I'll the be season? Back. Absolutely. Marta, thank you very much for having <laughs> thank us. Thank you. It's great seeing you. Place. Well, that's the end of the show. We hope you've enjoyed it. Massive thank you to SA Athletic Stadium and Minus 110 for the cryotherapy. I enjoyed it so much, I decided to get back in without cheens and have a good old time. Bye for now.